Hi everyone, I've got a really cool trick that I want to share with you and it's making wavy hair from straight hair. It's a great little trick and it's just using filters in Photoshop. It's actually probably a lot simpler than what you think as well, it's just a few little steps but I'm going to show you how to do it and hopefully it's going to help you in the future as well with your own work. This little tip's just great for beginners as well, so if you're struggling to draw wavy hair, just try this out, it'll give you a base to work from, and then you can just build your line art on top of that as well. So you should always try and learn to draw wavy hair yourself, don't just rely on this trick, but it just gives you the base that you need. I'm not sure if any of you's noticed, but this is sped up and it's just so I could draw the base face and the hair. I just want to make sure you guys can see the process of how I get to this stage as well. As always, I'd just ask if you could like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing so many tutorials. I won't just be doing digital art either, I'll be doing traditional art as well. So there's so much to come. As you could see then, I just flipped over the hair and that just made my life a little bit easier. I'm just lining it up now. The longer you take to draw a line, the more shaky it'll be. If you do struggle to draw fast, just open a new Photoshop document and do quick strokes, just keep practicing it. You'll get better and better and it'll start to come naturally. So now you need to make sure the lines that you want wavy are merged together. So as you could see then, I merged the two layers down together and then I'm going to my filters and clicking distort and then wave. And then I'm just gonna play around with some wave settings At the moment this doesn't matter because I know this is going to go wrong. I didn't make a selection of where I wanted the hair to wave. It's really important that you make a selection of the parts of her that you want to wave. Otherwise there's just no control as you can see here. It's a mess, it's just all over the place. I mean this is great if you had a stylized approach but that's not what I'm going for right now. I want to have more control to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bottom of the hair and then I'm going to go back to distort and wave again. Now, the problem here is the fact that the selections created a sharp cutoff point. See, that's just not good enough again. We need it to be blended more. There is a way around this and I'm going to show you that now. You want to make a selection again. So we'll go back to the selection tool and we'll create another square selection. Don't worry about this shape, but we want to go to select now, and then you want to modify it and put a feather on it. I usually go for about 150, and this just gives a great soft effect. So as you can see, the shape's changed now, and if you go back to your filter and do the wave again, you'll get a soft curls. That was so simple, and like, anybody can do it. You guys can do it, and it could save you a bit of time. I mean, you should also try and draw her, but don't worry if you're struggling, this is like a little beginner's trick and it'll help you. So I'm just playing around with the wave settings again. I had a slight issue with me recording, but I filled it in anyway for you so you know what's going on. That's why you can't see the settings at the moment. You can see in the preview when you're working with the wave filter, it gives you an idea of what's going on. So just play around with it, experiment, try what's good for your work. I'm going to add some colour in now. I want to see if I can replicate this with colour. I've sped this up, just so you guys can see how I'm colouring the hair. This is basic though, this is more sketchy. I've made sure my colour's underneath my lines as well. If you select your layer with the colour underneath and press control on it, you should get a selection around the colour and what you can do is you can create a new layer and then all you need to do is press this little mask button down here and now you can colour within the lines, just make sure you're not colouring on top of the mask and you're actually on the normal layer. I've put all these in a folder just to organise them and I've made a selection again now. This selection is really important to control how your curls fall. I've again feathered the selection. I need to see how I can get this to work now. 
because we've got several different layers. We've got the line art and the colour and we need the waves to work. So as you could see then, the waves have only worked on the colour layer because that's the only one I had selected. So all you need to do is click on your line layer and then wave them without touching any settings. So they have to be the same settings. But then as you could see, we got really cool curls out of it and it worked. So it's great and it's just so quick. I've made the curls a little bit tighter now. I just want to try and see how it can go. Again, I had to make sure both layers had the same settings on the wave tool. Obviously, it's pulled the colour around a little bit now, so we do need to make sure I'm cleaning this up. I just want to make sure the hair looks like it's actually going round the back. I mean, I don't know whether you guys ever drew characters and didn't make it look like they had hair from, from the back. So they looked kind of funny, like they had no hair. So I was trying to think about how the hair will fall at the back of the head as well. I think this tricks are so cool. I'm just going to do a quick side profile. I want to see if this can work if you've got your character with a ponytail and a hair. Start to get used to the form of the face as well over time and figuring out where stuff goes. And as you can see, all artists make mistakes as well. I'm not actually drawing a proper face or because the focus of this tutorial is for her. I sped this up again for you as well. So as you can see I'm just quickly drawing in the hair and I'm doing it so fast. Each stroke is just really quick and I'm trying to think about the gravity as well. How would gravity affect the hair? It will pull it down slightly so keep that in mind too, it'll make your hair look a lot more realistic. I'm trying to plan in my head how this can work out now. I'm going to have to make a selection again of the ponytail, but I'm just going to add some colour in first. I'm going for a nice pink colour this time. I've had so many people over the years ask me, why do my lines look wobbly? Well, that's just because you have to be quicker the way you're using your Wacom. Just practice doing quick lines. Trust me, you'll get there eventually. I'm just keeping it quite rough. With your work, you might want it a lot cleaner. What you can do is you can lock the transparency and I've just highlighted where you click that but make sure you click it off again. I'll show you why you need to take it back off in a minute. So I'm making my selection again and we need to make it soft again with the feather tool. So 150 again is great for this. And then I'm going to go back to my wave again and let's see what happens. So I'm just playing around with the settings on the wave again. It doesn't matter what settings you have, just make sure it's light. And as you can see, the issue we had there is because I didn't take the transparency off. So a black colour was pulled into the hair. So I've took that off and now it works. And you just need to make sure your line work has this same effect with the wave tool again. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you all learned something new. This trick is really handy for beginners and it's really good if you're struggling to get a good draft underneath your work for her so you can just use it as a base to sketch over. I have been focusing on more tutorials on wavy hair as well. I'm going to be showing you how you can draw wavy hair and how you can paint wavy hair. So thanks everyone.